Welcome everyone to Math Homework Helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today, we have the wonderful Miss Takara from Dundalk Middle School and from the math office itself, let's welcome to Math Homework Helpers for the first time, the fantastic Mr. Tang. Hello, Polly. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. It's so wonderful to finally be here and meet you all in person. Well, Mr. Tang, we are very happy to have you. Do you like the math homework hideout so far? I sure do. I can't get over all the cool math stuff that's going on around here. It is the place to be, Mr. Tang. Polly, after the show, you'll have to give Mr. Tang a tour of the rest of the clubhouse. That's a great idea, Mr. Kara. I'll give Mr. Tang the full tour. I'll even show him the backyard. Wait, Polly, there is no backyard here at Math Homework Helpers. Well, of course there is. Here you go. Of course, now this is in the front of the clubhouse, and so we'll have to call it the front yard. <laughs> oh, it's a yardstick. Polly, you are one funny puppet. Thanks, that's my favorite stick. <laughs> that's a good one, Polly. Let's get to the sh let's get this show started. If this is your first time watching, you should know we have prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you will have the chance to win one of our four very cool prizes from our math homework helpers, Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Mr. Tang, what are the prizes for today? This week's prizes are a calculator, a crazy keychain, a hot cold pack, and a crazy pen. Don't forget that after we help our callers with their math problem, we'll drop the puck on the Puck to Pick a Prize Wall and the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. That sounds great. We are having a few technical difficulties today, so to kick things off, we are going to head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm here with Officer Brown, a Baltimore County School Resource Officer. Officer Brown, can you tell me how the police department uses math? Uh, hola, Maria, uh, sure. Uh, math is used all the time. Uh, you know the most important job of a police officer is to keep people safe. Uh, one example is to be sure folks are driving safely. Did you know that we can calculate speed with a simple formula? No, can you tell me how? Sure, now normally we use technology to track people's speed like a radar gun, but if you really want to impress your friends, the formula for calculating speed is speed equals distance divided by time. So here's an example. Say we drive 60 miles and it takes about one hour. Mm -hmm. We know the distance and the time, so speed equals distance divided by time. Speed equals 60 miles per hour divided by one hour. Uh, we're gonna keep the time in hours because we drive miles per hour. So 60 divided by one equals 60 miles per hour. Oh, I see. Can we do another? Okay, so let's say we drive 80 miles and it takes one and a half hours. So, speed equals 80 miles per hour divided by one and a half hours, which would be 1.5 hours. So 80 miles divided by 1.5 hours equals 53 miles per hour. Perfect, you got it. And, that, and it looks like those speeds are pretty safe uh, for traveling. Wow, that sure was fun. Well, thank you, Maria, for stopping by and please stay safe and come back again. Gracias, adios. Adios. This is your Mighty Math Minute. Mighty Math Minute! Today we're going to show division using equal groups. So first you, you have 18. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
16, 17, 18. So we're going to count which is in each group. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if there's six groups, six, if there's three groups with six in each, it would be equal to six. I love those Mighty Math Minutes. Let's get things moving and go to the phones. The number to call is 410-494-1459. The number again is 410-494-1459. Holly, who's our first caller of the day? Our first caller is Amber from Norwood Elementary School. And Mr. Kara, she's in third grade. Let's say hi. Hi, hi Amber. Amber. Hi. How are you today? Good. Good. Do you have a math question for us? Perfect. Let's hear it. Um, please the bar diagram to represent and find the product. Um, use to practice. Okay. Volume one. Okay, Amber, can you say that one more time for me, please? Complete our diagram to represent and find the product. Okay. Review and practice volume one. Okay, so do you have a diagram on your paper? Yes, we have three of them. Okay, and what does that look like? Um, there's like a little number line. It's a number line? And then a question mark on the top of it. A number line question. Okay, and what was on the top of it, Amber? A question mark. A question mark. What's Perfect. the answer? A and little, like a long rectangle. There's a line that what? A long, a long rectangle? Mm hmm Underneath of the number line? Okay. So it's a bar diagram. And then, and then there is three lines to make little boxes. Three lines in the bar? Yes. So it's divided into three parts? Yes. Perfect. And how about our number line? It's divided into four parts. Our number lines four. divide into four parts? No, not the number line, the... The bar, the bar model? The bar models into four parts? Mm hmm Okay, so I'm just going to extend that a little bit. Are all the parts equal? Yes. And then there's two H next to each other in the beginning. There's what next to each other? There's two eights next to each other? Yes. Okay, so we have four, and then we have two eights next to each other? Yes. In the bar? In the, yes. So in each of the pieces? In two, in the beginning, there is um, eight. Okay, so an eight there, and another eight next to it? Uh-huh. Okay, are you watching me, Amber? Does that look right? Yeah, and then on the bottom, there's four lines. On the bottom of the bar, there's four lines? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are they going vertically or horizontally? Uh, horizontally. Horizontally. So does it look something like this? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, but differently, it's like they're next. So are they all different lengths? Is that what you're saying? Um, no. Here, under, under, one line under each box. One line under each box. Oh, okay. One so line underneath each line box. Under each one. There's an 8 and a 16 next to each other on the beginning where the 8 starts. So an 8 here? And a 16 here? Eight. On the lines, there's an 8 and a 16 in the beginning line. There's an 8 up to 8. Okay, I'm going to put that underneath. And, and then, then a 16 eight. under this 8? Yes. Excellent. So are there any 8s in these boxes? No, there's nothing on, the, on two boxes and two lines. Okay, but they're the same size, right? Are the boxes the same size, Amber? They're equal parts? I think so. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and put an 8 
in this box and an eight in this box because they all look like they're cut into eights. So now it looks like we are doing eight times four. So we're just skip counting by eight? Well, we did four times eight. It says on the bottom. Oh, excellent. It says four times eight on the bottom. That's perfect. So if we count it up from eight to 16 and we count up another eight, what's that going to be, Amber? Uh, we can count together. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24. And then we're going to count up eight more. That's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So that means four times eight equals 32. Excellent. Did we help you, Amber? Um, there's two more of them. There's two more? Mm -hmm. Just like that one? Yep. Oh, boy, I can't wait. Mr. Tang, do you want to turn at this? Sure, let's do it. All right, we're going to give Mr. Tang a turn. We can do one more together. Or? On this one, this time there's um, there's one long rectangle with three, with three pieces. All right, we have one. Give it to me. We have one long rectangle. Yes, but there's only three pieces. Oh. Three, so it's, it's, it's split up into three equal parts? Yeah. All right. How's that look? Mm. Looks and good, and Mr. Tang. another number line. And another number line on top or bottom? Um, well, since you don't have enough space, then on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Good idea, Amber. Always room on the bottom. Good job, yeah. Amber. I like the, yeah, the resourcefulness. <laughs> good job. And on the top, there's a nine. A nine? Oh, okay. In and then... In each of the in each of the boxes or the whole thing? Just one of them. Okay. And then there's three lines, like little lines. Okay. okay. Let's go here, here, and about there. Well done, Mr. Tang. Thanks. And I the under the nine, there's another nine. Excellent. And does the problem at the bottom say nine times three or three times nine? Three times nine. Oh. Perfect. Mr. Kara, how did you know that? Lucky guess. Jeez. <laughs> okay, is anything else filled in? Um, I think that's all. All right, so where can we start? What do you want to, maybe, um, you have any idea what would go inside this box? 18. In the box or on the line? Um, on the line, I think we'll go 18. Okay. I think you're right. And what about in the box? Should we put 18 here? I think I think we should do a nine. A nine, nine. okay. And that sounds about right because these kind of look similar, right? And if it's three groups of nine, we have nine here, nine here, and what do you think we should put in this last one? Um, another nine. Let's go ahead and put another nine there. And then for that, the line will be. Twenty-seven. What number? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You got it. Good Where did job. you get that twenty-seven from? Because I get time by nine, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. Okay. Very good, Amber. Great job, Amber. Amber, well, actually, fun. we're going to have you do the third one on your own, but you know what time it is. I know what time it is, Mr. Tang. What Me time too. is it? Time to drop that puck. All right, here we go, Amber. Oh, crazy pen. the crazy pen. I love it. Congratulations, Amber. Thanks for calling. Bye, Amber. Have a good day. Bye, Amber. Thanks for calling in. We have another call, everybody. Are you ready for another problem? We are. Okay, it's Aya from Norwood Elementary School. She's in third grade, too. Hi, Aya. Hi, Aya. Hi. Hi, Aya. Oh, sure. You have a problem for us, Aya? Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, solve this multiplication chart from this slide. Review and practice volume one, topic five, part Okay, so do we have a long rectangle in this problem too? No, they're just like um, multiplication tables. Oh, okay, great. And what numbers are we working with? Um, there's two, three, four, 
Four four eight five five fifteen to consult on the multiplication. That was a lot of numbers. Can you slow down this time? What do you mean by multiplication table? How is that set up? Like there is two multiplication tables, like in a square, and it's like um with all these numbers on it. So is it one problem in a square? Like two times I, two, is that in a square? Um, you want me to like tell you the numbers on the multiplication table? That would be great. Can you go a little bit slowly though? Okay. Perfect. Um, two, three, four, four, eight, five, five, fifteen, twelve, sixteen, and six. What was after the second five? Um, I think it was another five. Another you have two fives? I have two fives. Um, there's a two. I have two, three, three four, 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 eight, five, five. Fifteen, twelve, and six. Fifteen, 15 twelve, 12. And six and was six. the last one? Six. Okay, so those are all of our numbers. What are we doing with these numbers? So oh. technically, we're going to um, try to find the answer to whatever number is, like on the multiplication table. Okay, so if we looked at two times three, would we look for another answer there? Or how would that work on your paper? Like, there's some blank spaces, so you can put the answer there, like, there's blank spaces. Excellent. Where do the blank spaces come in? Oh, uh, um, there's the multiplication sign and a blank next to the two. There's um, a blank next to the eight, a blank next to the six, a blank next to the second five. And the blank next to the 12. Okay, I think I got this now. So, am I looking for 2 times something equals something else? No, 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 no. So, it's like where you can like get two numbers on the multiplication table, and then you want to try to find out the answer. And when you get the answer, you write the... Um, the answer in the blank box. Okay. So two times what? What could we use there? And then two times. Or can we say two times three? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So two times three equals what? Six. Six. Very good. So we used those two numbers. We used a two and a three. Are we good with those two now? Um, yeah, but now we need to put the answer in the blank box. Okay. The, I'm just going to put a box around that answer for you. Okay. Does that work? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what about the two fours? Can we multiply those two together? Um, I don't think so, because no. they're right next to each other. Oh, okay. So what if we multiplied this 4 by this 5? Can we do that? Um, well, I, it's really hard for us to be able to um, do this without seeing your actual chart. So why don't we just go ahead and try to multiply what we have up here to see if we can find any of the answers that we might have already uh, listed here. So we use 2 and 3. Is there anything we can multiply together to get 12, maybe? Um, maybe 5 times 3. Oh, okay, so 5 times 3. If we skip count by 5, we have 5. What's another 5? 10. And what's another 5? 15. 15. Do we have, we do have 15 we up have here. We have a 15. So All right. 5 times 3 is 15, and I'm going to box in that answer. All right, so we're checking off a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, How about we use the 8 and the 4? Ooh. Yeah. Excellent. What is 8 times 4? 
um, four, eight, one. Good strategy. I like your skip counting. Eight times four? Uh-huh. So we have eight, 16. 20. 24, good. Um, and then eight more is going to take us to 32. Yeah. That's a big one. Okay, excellent. So we used our eight and our four. So now we could use four and five. Yeah, let's finish out with four and five. Okay. Oh, excellent. What's four times five? Um, 20. Very wow, good. That was you really got good. Quick. So quick. Okay, so the, that help us? Yeah. Okay, excellent. We wanted to use the two again. We could say six times two equals 12. 12. There we go. And we have used all of your numbers. And there's another multiplication table. Yeah. Th Unfortunately, we can't see your multiplication table, so that makes it a little harder for us. But guess what time it is? I know, I know. Pick a prize. Yeah. Yes, it's time to pick a prize. Let's do that. Drop that puck, Mr. Tang. Crazy pen. Oh, another crazy oh, pen. Oh, I like those. Thanks for calling in, Aya. Bye-bye. So we have a new caller. Are you ready for another problem? We are ready. Okay, it's Troy from Pinewood Elementary School, and he's in fifth grade, so his problem might be really hard, too hard for me to help. Oh, boy. Hey, Hi, Troy. Troy. How are Hi, you? Hi, Troy. Hi. Do you have a hard question for us? Yes, I think I do. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, bring it, Troy. 0 0.9. Oh, boy. Divided by 7.551. I thought it was the other way around. 7.551 divided by 0 0.9. Oh, Troy, how do we read those numbers in math class? 7 and? It's, oh, 7 and 551,000. Excellent. Beautiful. Divided by? Divided by 9 tenths. Oh, I love that. Wow, divided that by 9 tenths? Really hard. I think that's a really hard one. Do you think Mr. Tank can do it? Mr. Kara, it's only his first time. I, I don't want to like stress him out, you know? Well, hopefully Troy can help us out here. Okay, okay. I think so. Whew. I feel better already. All right, Troy, where should we start? Okay, first you can start by moving the decimal point over. Oh, are we allowed, is that legal? Can we just move the decimal point? Um, so first you move it, the decimal point and the nine over. Okay. But what are we doing to move that decimal point over, Troy? You have to move it on the other side, too. You do. So we should set this up. Are you doing long division, Troy? Um, well, this is a study packet for the test. OK. So are you using the standard algorithm for when you divide? Yes. OK. So we're going to set this up like with the little house? Yes. OK, perfect. What number goes on the outside of the little house, Troy? Well, before, um, before we do that, Troy, you said we want to move the decimal, right? Yes. Do you remember what allows you to do that? No. OK, so what we're going to do is because we don't like dividing with the divisor with a decimal in it, so what we're going to do is make it into a whole number, right? So if we have 9 tenths, how do we turn 9 tenths into a whole number? You move the decimal point over 1. Okay, we are going to move the decimal point, but does something in math allows us to do that? What we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by 10. ten. Yes, there oh, you go. Good job. Good, good job, Troy. Troy. So when we multiply this by 10 over here, we are going to move the decimal point over 1 because we're annexing a 0 to that, right? So mm -hmm. instead of having 9 tenths, we have 9 ones. And what are we doing on this side? You move the decimal point over. Okay, so we're going to multiply this side by 10 also. And we move the decimal point over one time. So what's our new problem say? 75 and 51 hundredths. Divided by? Divided by 9. Beautiful. All right, so this is what we have to do next, right? Yes. All right, and you said you're solving this with standard algorithm? Yes, I did. All 
right? Let me see how I can clear this. All right, so we have 75 and 51 hundredths divided by 9. Yes. All right, what do we do first? Um, well. Well, what's our greatest place value we have in our dividend? 9. Uh, so the, ni the 9 is in a, it's, that's actually our divisor. But in our dividend, we have 75 and 51 hundredths, right? So, yes. but so that 7 is in what place value? The, oh, no, no, the tens. Ten. OK, so do we have enough tens to pull out 9 of them from the 7? No, but 9 goes into 75. OK, so we don't have enough to do the tens. So if we look, take a look at the ones, you're right, 9 does go into 75. How many times does 9 go into 75? Um, 8 times. 8 times. And you, said, and you know that because 9 times 8 equals what? Uh, 72. 72. So let's go ahead and put in our quotient the 8. And what are we subtracting from that 75? 72. All right. So how many ones are we left with? Three. OK. 75 minus 72 is three. Are we finished? Mm, no. No. OK. So what's next? We have three ones left, right? Can we take any um, nines out of the three ones? No. No. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next place value. Oh, boy. We have our decimal point here, so if we if we have our decimal point, then what place value is this 5 in? The tenth. The tenths. So let's go ahead and see. We have three ones. We can't do anything with those ones. So let's go ahead and bring down our tenths. And we have, how many tenths do we have all together now? Um, five. We have the five tenths, adding it to our three ones. So now all together we have 35 tenths. OK, so if we have 35 tenths, how many nines can be pulled out of 35? Three. Three, let's check it out. Nine times three is? Do you know what nine 27. times? 27. OK. Good job. All right, so let's go ahead and in our quotient, we have to make sure to put our decimal point there to separate our ones and our tenths. We put a three here. So if we have 3 tenths, that equals 27. How many tenths do we have left over? Um, you have 8. 8. Let's take a look. Let's see, we can't do 5. OK, 15, 8. 8 tenths. Can we pull any more groups of 9 out of 8? Um, no, you can't, so you have to carry the 1. OK, so we're done with our tenths. We move on to our next place value. That What place value is that one in? The hundredth. The hundredths. So we had one hundredth, and we're going to bring that down, add it to our eight tenths. So that gives us a total of how many hundredths? Um, eight. Yeah, eighty-one. You're eighty-one. 81. We have job. eighty-one hundredths. Can we divide that by nine? Yes. All right, and how many times will that go in there? Nine. So we have 9 times 9, and that equals? 81. Ooh, is that the number we want? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and put our 9 in our hundredths place for our quotient. And we're subtracting 81. Do we have anything left, Troy? No. No. So what's our final answer here? 8 and 39 tenths. No, hundredths. Yes. Good job. Good job. Well done, Troy. Thanks well for pulling. Done. Oh. Yeah, you know what time it is? I know. What time is it? Time Paul? to drop the ball. Yeah. Get a let's do that. Get a prize for Troy. Prize for Troy. That was some hard work, Mr. Tang. Woo, crazy keychain. Crazy keychain. I love it, Troy. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Troy. Enjoy your keychain. Bye, Troy. Okay, so we have another caller. 
are you ready for another tough problem? Because this yes. one, this friend, is in middle school. It's Otik from Ridgely Middle School in sixth grade. Middle school. Oh, hi, hey, Otik. How are you? You have a math problem for us, Otik? 308 times 92. 308, I think you said eight. 308? 308? Yeah. 308. Oh, 308. Yeah, don't say See, and. Polly knows. That's my rule. Polly hears really well. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. Polly. You're 308. Welcome what are we doing with that 308, Altic? You multiply it by 92. By 92? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Are you using standard algorithm at Ridgely Middle School, Altic? Yeah. Oh, excellent. So I need to stack these numbers then, right? Are you watching with us, Altic? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's how I want to stack my numbers, right? 308 times yeah. 92? Excellent. So what two numbers am I going to multiply first, Altic? Two and eight. Excellent. What's 2 times 8? 16. 16, and I have to regroup my 1. And 2 times 0 is? 0. Plus 1? Is 1. Excellent. And then finally, 2 times 3? 6. Is 6. Excellent. So I got my 2 times my 8, which was 16. I regrouped my 1 into my tens place. So I have my 16 there, and then 2 times the 300 actually is 600. I am all finished with my ones place, but I have to do something, I'll tick before I can start my tenths place. What do I have to do? You have to one the top. Okay, I'm going to erase that little one so that doesn't confuse us, but before I can start multiplying my tens. You have to put a zero under the six. So I have to six. annex that zero, right? Because that's my placeholder. Yeah. So now I can go and say, okay, nine times eight is what, Altic? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. So I place my two under the one. I'm going to regroup my seven. Nine times zero is zero. Plus seven is seven. And then finally, 9 times 3 is? 27. Oh, you are good. Now I have these two big numbers. What am I going to do with those two big numbers? You have to add them together. Excellent. I have to add them together. So 6 plus 0 is? 6. And 1 plus 2 is? 1 plus 2 is? 3. 6 plus 7? 13. 13. I regroup my 1. That gives me 7 plus the 1. Is 8. 8. And then finally, my 2. And I think there's just one thing missing in my answer, Altic. Do you know what that is? No. It's my comma. Do you know where my comma goes? Do you know where my comma goes? In between the 8 and Excellent. Very good. So that means that 308 times 92 is, can you read that big number, Altic? Number, Altic? Yeah. Read it for me. 20,336. 20, good. 28,336. Excellent. We don't want to use that word end in there because that makes me think that's where a decimal goes. But this is a comma. But good job. Thank you for all your math help, Altic. That was really good, Altic. You did that almost all by yourself. She that did. That was a great job, Altic. That was fantastic. Are you ready to get a prize? Yeah. Let's go drop that puck. Come on, Mr. Tang. Oh, crazy, crazy pen Tang. again. Yay. Congratulations, Altic. Thanks for calling in. Bye, Altic. Bye. See ya. Hey, we have another caller. Are you ready for another problem? We're getting worked really hard today. Yeah, who's our we next caller? Are. Okay, it's Aldi from Relay Elementary School. Grade 5-2, so it's going to be a tough one. 
Hey, uh, Audie, is it? Yeah. Hi, Audie. Hi, Audie. How are you today? Hi, Audie. Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. Great. I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> how can we help you today, Audie? What's your math problem, Audie? Eighty equals negative eighty. Hold on, can you start over? Then what is two? Audie, can you start over for me? Uh, if if a equals negative eighty, then what is two a divided by four? Is a two a on top of the four? Oh uh, no. It's with the 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 the, the division sign. Yeah. Okay, so two a divided by four. Audie, okay. where do you want to start with this? The multiplication. Okay, what are we going to multiply? Um, two and negative eighty. Okay, so what we want to do first is substitute that a, right? So we have the a here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and substitute that out, and that's a negative eighty. And I love how you knew that the that the number next to the variable meant multiplication. So we're going to do two. I'm going to use this to represent multiple. Actually, let's put it in parentheses, right? Negative eighty mm -hmm. divided by four. And now we're just going to do order of operations, right? Yeah. Okay. So you said you wanted to start with two times negative eighty. What is 2 times negative 80? Negative 160. Wow, that's pretty good. How did you know that? Because basic fact is 2 times 8 is 16, and then A next is 0. OK, and how did you know it was negative and not positive? Because when you multiply with, with negative, it always comes out with negative. Okay, if it's a positive and a negative, it always comes out as negative. Good. Another way you could think of it is two groups of negative 80, right? And so that we have negative 160. Great job. So let's have negative 160. And what else do we have left? Divided by 4. 4. Okay, so what do we do next? Um, divide 160 to 4. Okay. Which is. Negative 40. Okay, how did you do that so quick? You didn't have to do standard algorithm or anything? No, because uh, 16 divided by 4. I love that you're using your basic division fact, and that's? 4. Okay. And then annex is 0. Okay. Is this our final answer, 40? No. And then the negative. Yeah, we can't forget that negative sign. Just like when you multiply with the negative, if you're dividing by a negative, you need to keep that negative sign. So what's our final answer then, Audie? Negative 40. Beautiful. Great job. Good job, Audie. You know Audie what time it is? Audie her stuff. She knows it's time to drop a puck because she knew all that answer to that math problem. That was really hard. Polly was stumped. Let's She's drop that puck, Audie. Are come we on, ready, let's Audie? Get Here Mr. we go. Cal. Hot Ooh. coal. Oh, the hot coal and pack. I like that. Audie, thanks for calling. Thanks, Audie. Thank you for inviting me to join. Thanks for joining See you later. Us. OK, we have another caller. Are you ready? Are you ready? OK, it's Bobby. Say hi to Bobby from hi. our Arbutus Middle School. He's in sixth grade. It's going to be a tough one. I hope you're ready, Mr. Carroll. Uh oh, hey, I Bobby. think I am. Hi, Bobby. Hello. How are you? Hi, Bobby. Hi. You, have, you have a math problem for us today, Bobby? Yes. Let's hear it. What do you got for us? Okay, 64 over 100, and then equal to um, nothing over 50. So for this, you have to find the top number of the 50. Okay, excellent. We're, I'm actually doing this myself at Dundalk Middle now. So we are doing percents? Yes. Proportions? Perfect. So can you tell me what strategies your teacher is teaching you in the classroom, Bobby? So what I do, I multiply the 64 and the 50 together to get a number. Okay. Then I divide it by 100, okay. and then that's the top number. 
Perfect. So you're using the cross multiplication and then division. So let's go ahead and multiply 64 yep. times 50. Mm -hmm. And I know that 0 times 4 is what? 0. 0. And 0 times 6 is also 0, right? Yep. And if I still want to stick with the long multiplication, I can put annex that 0 under there. And then 5 times 4 is? 20. 20. And I'm going to regroup my 2. And 5 times 6 is? 30. Plus 2. 32. 32. And I add those together, and what is that number, Bobby? 3,200. Excellent, 3,200. So that number goes where then, Bobby? Um, Nowhere yet, right? It's not our X. No way. Look Excellent. So now we have to take our 3,200, and we have mm -hmm. to divide it by, by 100. Excellent. And what is that answer going to be? 32. 32. So that means that x equals 32. X, x equals 32. X equals 32. Excellent. Very good. Hey, Bobby, can I tell you one other quick way that you could have done that? And maybe yeah. your teacher has shown you. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll look at the 100 and the 50 and kind of think about, okay, what mathematically did you do to that 100 to get to 50? Um, two. You divided, right, by two? Divided by two. Excellent. And if then what you do at the bottom, you do at the top. If you divide 64 by two, what do you get? 32. And that's a great way to check your answer so that we know that our answer was correct and x equals 32. Good strategy, Ms. Takara. Thanks. I love percents and proportions. Bobby, thanks for calling in with that question. Bobby, you You're ready? Welcome. Are you ready to drop the puck? Yes. Let's do it. Come on, Mr. Tang. All right, let's get you something Here good, we Bobby. Go. Ooh, crazy keychain. Crazy keychain. I love it. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Bobby. <laughs> okay, so now, now, Mr. Kara and Mr. Tang, we have Nathan, and he's from Relay Elementary School, and he's in fifth grade, so it's going to be another hard problem, oh, and wow. I know you're getting oh, tired. Another hard one. Hi, Nathan. I, I take love. a deep breath, everybody. Take a deep breath. I love all these fifth and sixth graders calling in. This Hi, Nathan. Great. Hi. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Nathan, how can we help you today? So I have a math problem that says uh, A equals 50. And then we do uh, 2A equals 100. All right. 2A equals 100. Yep. Where do we want to start, Nathan? Uh, we want to start with A with I'm sorry, what was that? We want to replace the A with the 50. Okay, A with the 50. So then we have 2, and in parentheses, let's put our 50, and that equals 100. Yep. Is that true? Yep. <laughs> so what does this mean? It means that 2 times 50 is 100. So 2 times 50 equals 100. Yep. So was your job just to say if it was true or false? Yeah. All right, and what do we say? Uh, true. All right, true. nice and easy. Excellent. Yes, Thanks for calling in, Nathan. Oh, that was a quick one, but Nathan gets a prize. Let's, let's drop that puck. Drop it. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, a calculator. Ooh, what a calculator. perfect prize. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, congratulations, okay. Nathan. I like that. See you later, Nathan. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Zero turning action. Okay, we have another caller. Are you ready? Oh, good. Yes. Okay. I feel like we're doing the Math Olympics today here we at are. the Math Homeworks Helpers <laughs> Hideout. Okay, so it's Mame from Wellwood Elementary School. She's in fourth grade. I bet her question's hard too. Hi, Hi Mame. Hi. Hi. Mamie. It's yeah. Mamie. They yeah. hear Mamie. Oh, hi, Mamie. How are you today? Hey, Mamie. Good. Good. Do you have a math question for us? Yeah. Perfect. Um, it's division, so my teacher told us to use standard algorithm to divide. Okay, we're using the standard algorithm to divide. What are we dividing, Mamie? It's, um, it's 2 and then 523. 2 is on this side and 
523 is in the middle. Okay, I got 523 mm -hmm. divided by? Two. Two? Yeah. Okay. So if we're using standard algorithm, I'm going to set it up like this. Whoops. That's big five. It's a, it's a big, big five. five. Big five. Okay, so I'm going to set it up like this, Mamie. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to put my 523. Wow. What, uh, what was that? Now I'm making eights. Mr. Kara's changing the problem, Mamie. Oh, I know we don't want to do that. We have to keep an eye on her today. You do. She's getting tired of all that hard math. <laughs> I'm not used to all these fifth and sixth and fourth graders calling. It's great. So, Mamie, I'm going to look at my two, and I'm going to look at my very first number, which is five. Can two go into five? Um, no. How many times? Um, two. So 2 times 2 equals 4. i got to write a little bit smaller to fit this all in. So now I want to multiply. What's 5 minus 1? Hmm? 5 four. minus five 1. Minus oh, sorry. Oh, I gave five. you the answer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 5 minus 4 is 1. What do I do next, Mamie? Um, I um, times. Two minus five. Okay, I did five minus four equals one. I have to bring down my two. So now I'm thinking 12 divided by two equals what, Mamie? Um, 12. Twelve divided by. Yep, how many sets of two can you fit into 12? Six. Six, very Six. good. And six times two equals? 12. 12. So that was an easy one. And then finally, 12 minus 12 is? Zero. Zero. And I have to bring down my three. Well, this looks like it might have a remainder. And how many times can two fit into three, Mamie? Zero and three, one. Only one time. And one times two is? Um, two. Two. And when I subtract, that gets me one. But you know, there's one other thing that I could do. I could put a decimal point after this three, because I haven't changed the number, right, or the value, and bring my decimal point up here and annex a zero. And now I have 10. I know it's hard to see down there. But now I have 10. What is 10 divided by 2? Um, um, Five. And then 5 times 2 is 10, and if I subtract 10 times 10, I get 0. So instead of leaving that remainder of 1, are you doing that in class? Are you annexing a 0 after putting a decimal? No. Oh, good. So perfect. So we got you the perfect answer then, right? Mm hmm And can you read this answer for us? Um, well, actually, I'm not really watching TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I will tell you, your answer is 261 and 5 tenths. Did we um, help you out, I have Mamie? A question. Um, can your remainder be um, bigger than like the number on the side? Oh, that is a super question. So I want you to think about this. Let's say that I had a 5 down here. Could I say that I have a remainder 5? Or could 2 still fit into that 5? Yes. I could still fit groups of 2 into that 5. So your remainder can never, ever, ever be larger than your divisor. That was a really good question, Mamie. Because um, for one of my questions, it was 78 divided by 5, and my remainder was Oh, okay. So then that would make me think that's when you have to go back and you need to see if there's a larger number that you should have put in your quotient than you did. So you said it was, what was the original problem? Um, 78 divided by 5. 78 divided by 5? Yes. And what did you say the answer was? 15 remainder 8. 
16, remainder 8? No, 15. 15. Remainder 8. 15 remainder 8. Well, that 10th place was definitely correct. I'm going to go ahead and erase this real quick okay. and show you so that we can clear that up for you. Where is that eraser? Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Okay. Oh, there so, it is. <laughs> excuse me. So 78 divided by 5. <coughs> so, Mamie, we know that 5 goes into 7 how many times? Um just once right yeah and then one times five is five five and when i subtract what's seven times five two seven, two and then i bring down that eight so now i have 28. how yeah. many times can five go into 28. um five five times so that's 15. i'm so, five times five is um 25. 25. Now, when I subtract 28 minus 25, what is my remainder? Eight. How much? Eight. Eight. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's look at this. We have eight minus five is? Oh, because I, I got one on my other one. Okay, that's okay. So we know that we just have a remainder three, or we could put that decimal in place again and annex a zero. And well, 8 minus 5 is 3. You are correct. Thank you for fixing that. So if I put in my decimal and annex my 0, now I can say 30 divided by 5 is what? Um, 3. 6. 6, yeah. 6. And 6 times 5 equals 30. 30. And that completes our answer. So we technically have no remainder left over. So did that help you? Yeah. All right. I'm glad that you saw that your error in that last problem. Thanks for calling in, Mimi. Mimi, oh. it's time to drop the puck. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, Let's Mimi, do it. you're not watching, so hopefully you it's get a good going. one. What's it gonna be? <gasps> hot cold Ooh, pack. Hot cold pack. Oh, I love it. All Thanks right. for calling in, Mimi. Bye, Mimi. Bye. Well, kids, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode. Be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. Check it out. Be sure to tell your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, Only here, here on BCPS TV. TV. Bye! Elvis, I love the building.